Right, well I've done all the internal cutting now, as best I can. All that remains to do now is cut the outside. Now I've got to be careful because it's only held together the two pieces with sellotape. So as I cut it, I will probably add some little bits of sellotape to the edges to try and keep it together. Turn on the saw and away we go. Right, so we're ready to start. Blade's just gone. Well, I'm blade, look at that. Just shows you, doesn't it? See, <laughs> every time that, I wasn't even cutting, Every time that happens, it makes me jump out of my skin. What's happened is it's snapped off at the bottom where it fits in the blade holder, I think. Either that or it's fallen out. It's come out of it. Um, but <laughs> did you notice it makes one hell of a bang when that goes and it scares the hell out of you. It's very rare for that to happen when I got the camera going. Well, that was quite good, wasn't it? If I tried to do that to get that to happen, to demonstrate it, it probably wouldn't. Off we go again. Long sweeping cut that is. Now I'm going to take this off, take that piece right off. Now there's some sala tape that holds that together there, you see, so it will come apart. So what I'm going to do is put a bit of fresh sala tape around there to keep it together while I'm working. We don't want it to come apart while we're working, so just pop a bit of tape around there just to hold it together, like that lot. See, and now I can do the next bit. I'll do the other side there now, look. Now I'll go up into this corner and then I shall back off. I shan't do it, I shan't try and turn the blade there. It's not worth it. Oops, turn that off. Right, what I'll do now, I'll um Stop the filming and I'll carry on and cut a bit more out and I'll come back just before I finished. Well, I've practically finished the cutting out of the outline now. There's just this little bit here at the bottom to do. So I'll cut that out and then we'll have a look and see what it looks like. It's getting awkward to hold it together now. Uh, because of the shape of it, it's quite difficult to handle. Ah, that's it, I've done it. That's all the cutting done, and next thing is to get the pattern off. But what I'm going to do first, I'm going to get a sharp knife and slice it open, the two, and then hopefully uh, we can see what it's like. Well, hopefully you can see it from there. All I'm going to do now, I'm just going to go around with a sharp knife if I can and just move the salad tape carefully. I don't want to snap anything off at this stage, that's it. I can take the surplus salad tape off the surface later on. There we go. There you are. Now that's covered in dust. There's the white uh, plywood one from the back and this is the... Uh, hardwood one. You'll notice there is a little bit of cut out on it so it will need some sand in uh, but it's not too bad otherwise. Uh, once I've taken the, all the paper off the front and it should be okay. It looks alright anyway. I don't think cutting's too bad. It, it could be worse couldn't it? I've done my best. Well there we are. I'm just about finished. As you can see the mahogany coloured one is quite nice. It's okay on both sides. Uh, I've sanded it down, that was the side with the pattern on and here we've got the plywood one and, and both are quite acceptable and usable uh, generally speaking this would be the sacrificial one but uh, you know fitted onto a dark background that would look quite attractive I think and the same with this you can either use it like that neat fit it on a wall like that or you can put a background on it you've got the little shelf here to be fitted on and the little shelf support which sort of adds to it uh, both hobbies and handicrafts are always keen on putting little shelves and things on their, their their brackets. I think it's more decorative than functional. I don't think you'd put much on it that size, and if you did, it would probably fall down, wouldn't it? But I think it's the idea as it looks rather nice, actually. But I think it's quite an attractive pattern. I don't know what you think. Be interested to hear your comments about it, but I, I'm quite pleased with that, actually. i finished the two brackets now. And I've also, I've fitted the little shelves on the shelf support, so I use super glue for that because it's much easier than trying to drill through uh, and put little screws in, so super glue will do the job. They're only decorative anyway. And I've also given them a coat of lacquer, well two coats actually of lacquer, 
Uh, what I used was this particular spray paint. This is only a cheap thing. I got this from B&M stores. But you can buy it in anywhere. I think Wilco sell it and possibly Poundland as well. It's just basic lacquer. Uh, clear, quick drying, clear lacquer. And I find that does the job fine because it's easy to get in the nooks and crannies. It does bring out the colour a bit in the wood. It's made it slightly darker. So we've got the dark wood one and the light wood one. Now what I thought was, um, I often like to see a backing on my my fretwork. It looks a bit odd sometimes like that. So I've made two back plates. I haven't fitted them on yet. I'm just going to uh, stick them on later. But I'll just show you what I've done. I made these two plates. Obviously the dark wood one will go behind the light one. And obviously vice versa that one will go behind the dark wood one. And uh, I think they look nicer on that. I don't know what you think. You might have a different idea. I don't think my wife's too keen on the backings when I showed her. But I think they, I think it adds to it. I think they look nicer like that. And it's easier to display them on the wall as well because you, you can um, easily fit that on. Whereas it's more awkward with a delicate pattern. On top of that, of course, it does help keep the bits from breaking off. If you just, some of these parts are pretty delicate. These little corners sticking out here can easily snap off if you're not careful. Whereas if it's on that back end, it's less likely to get broken, I think. So I, I think I'll leave it like that. I think that's fine. Anyway, that's about it for that particular design. Uh, I am going to start another one in a moment. I'll just show you what I'm going to do next. It's like an eagle, and then you've got a decorative piece here with a little sort of uh, mirror, triangular sort of shaped mirror there. And then um, you've got a little shelf on it. Until obviously I've had to make these up because I only only had this actual pic. I didn't have I didn't have the design. I only had the picture, and it was only a tiny picture. You, if you look carefully, this is the actual picture here that I had. I copied that out of a book and then I created that from that little picture by with the help of Photoshop. Uh, and these parts I had to make up myself uh, to fit. What it is basically, it's a, a fairly tall piece, tall narrow piece, fitting a small small little by a door or something. And, and then you notice it's got a dovetail joint there and there. And then the two fit together so you get a piece about this long. Uh, the, the way it's done is Hobbies and handicrafts used to use this method quite a lot. For a long piece of work, which is awkward to cut on a hand frame or on a treadle machine, which is what, what it used to be done, uh, they'd often cut it in small parts and then you put a little dovetail joint like this so you could join the two, make it easier to cut out. And then when you've done it, you joined it together and then the little shelf would fit over the join to disguise it so you wouldn't see the join in it. The advantage, of course, of doing it in several parts is if you, if you cut this piece up, out and you make a mess of it you haven't wrecked the whole design whereas if it's one long piece and you you've got most of it cut out and then you muck it up on the last bit you wasted the whole thing but with having it in two parts you can you know you've only got the one part to do before i end the video i just thought i'd show you the bird bracket that i made if i i showed you earlier the plans for it and this is the finished item here i did stack cut them so you you've got the two to choose from uh, this one's made in oak and this one's made in a bit of ramen. Both of them were just strips of wood that I made into panels myself. The particular oak one has a significance because it's uh, part of the oak from our old fireplace. We had a fire in the house a few years back and it destroyed the fireplace. Uh, and some of the oak down the side was unburnt and I cut that off and made a panel. And I've cut this out of a bit of that oak which is quite nice rather than wasting it. And the other one's made a bit of ramen that I joined together. Since then, I've made another one, which I haven't actually filmed, which I, you might like to see. So I just moved these two out of the way first. And then I'll show you my next one that I've already made on the quiet when the camera wasn't running. And that's this. This is a, a chicken bracket. It's um, a little bracket. There's a little house here, look, obviously, and then the sun behind. You can't see it very well, but I'll turn it over and you can see the... The rays of the sun sticking out on the back, and you've got a chicken there. He was a bit fiddly to cut out with all the the veining sort of cuts, and then you've got a little mirror on the front with a thing. And what I've done, I decided it looked better uh, with a backing on, so I made a mahogany backing. I cut this shape out. I thought this suited it. I just used my compass and a bit of cardboard, and then that will sit on there like that. You see. Uh, and the light on the dark, I think you, you'll agree, looks quite nice and it shows it up much nicer than having it on the wall w without the backing. That's my belief anyway. Uh, I, I've also did another one. I always stack cut, so I did a, a mahogany version. So I'll just show you that one. I'll just put this one up there out of the way. 
Uh, this, this is one I did earlier, so to speak. Uh, this was cut at the same time. Uh, this one's a, a bit of mahogany or mahogany look-alike. And I used a bit of the ramming from the Eagle Project ones to make the chicken and, and the frame. And then I cut a little mirror and put in there. And so you got the two versions again, that one or that one. And funny enough, uh, my wife always likes the light one best. Uh, and yet this is the better wood. That's only plywood and this is hardwood. But uh, some people like one, some people like the other. But they're quite nice, aren't they? It's quite a nice design. I didn't have the original design. Again, this was just a little tiny picture in an old Hobbies annual from many, many years ago. And I, I got the picture and then created the design from that picture. If you want to know how I do that, look at part one of this uh, video series and you'll see the way I do it. Because I do explain how I use Photoshop to create the pictures. Well, I've explained it briefly, put it that way. Anyway, um, that's about all for now. I've grappled on enough, I think. Before I go, I'll just show you what I'm going to do for my next fretwork project. And it's this handicraft design of a giraffe bracket. Dates from 1925. As usual, I don't have the pattern, just a tiny drawing. And I've created this from Photoshop, as near as I could possibly tell by the design. And uh, I've created these little extras, little brackets and things, to go underneath to finish it off. So, um... Hopefully that's, I'll, I'll perhaps do a little video on that. I won't put too much fret work in because people get bored of seeing the same old thing. But I'll, I'll just show a few bits and pieces. Anyway, that's what I'm hoping to do next time. Anyway, uh, thanks very much for watching. And hopefully I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now. Goodbye. Goodbye.